up and they are going to tell a story that's never been told before. But I am in total control of the story because they can't talk unless I'm pointing at them. One, two, three, and four. Uh, now, in order for us to begin, I need uh, genres of story like, sci like science fiction or western for Fantasy. our authors. Fantasy, I heard. Fantasy. Fantasy. So, John, find out what? Drama. 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 History. History. Science History. History. Science fiction. 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 All right. We've got all of our genres. Now all we need is the title of a story that's never been told before, like Harold and the Unicycle of Death, or... Swipe left. What? Swipe left. Swipe, Swipe left. left. Wow. Wait. <laughs> for those of you over 40, I believe that is a Tinder reference. <laughs> Although I, I'm married, so I'm not allowed to know for sure. Um, all right, uh, so Swipe Left is the title of the story, and it will be told in the genres of... Fantasy. Drama. History. Science fiction. And <laughs> Chapter one, page one of Swipe Left. St. George the Knight rode out that day with his great sword, the sword he'd pulled from the great stone way beyond in the Queen's land. The stone would read him the rightful ruler of this land, but he must prove. Prove that the day was gonna be hard. <laughs> he had his divorce coming up, and he was sad about that, and even his horse was angry with him. <laughs> but from years past, he knows this horse. There's a friend of his, a very, very interesting friend, of course, because he holds the truth to his journey. The truth which comes from a far beyond planet. <laughs> Where that planet is, our minds can't comprehend. What I can tell you, there's a bunch of robots, and they want vengeance. <laughs> vengeance of a magnitude that no one had ever seen before. Lola the robot approached George. Hi. You might recognize me from things such as history. <laughs> I have been here before, and we have communicated, but your mind might have been erased. Let me inform you on all of the things that we have encountered before. But before Lulu could speak, a great dragon burst into the throne room. It breathed great fire and smoke. George threw the young woman behind him and said, Do not fear, my young lady. I shall defend thee. I have a pocket full of little metallic spiders that have just been thrown at you. And they crawl up the wall and come at you. You can probably step on them. It's going to be spooky, though. It was spooky. <laughs> Spooky down to the core of George's being. Just like going deep inside of an attic of an old Victorian house. <laughs> there! There, one would find the great glass circle. And also an element that hasn't been discovered, but we should have done. <laughs> We have discovered many elements. We have been here before. And how we're going to divide them up in the divorce? <laughs> it's called New Choice. So Jeffro and Kyle here are going to be doing a scene, um, but at various points they are going to say something that I'm going to uh, not like as much, or I'm going to want them to say something else, so I will ring the bell and they'll have to say something else. So for example, in the middle of the scene you might hear something like, I have a cat, I have a dog, I have pneumonia. <laughs> And the scene will continue on as if I have pneumonia is the only thing that was said. Okay, so to get these two started, um, I just need a couple suggestions. Let's start with, how about a relationship? How do Kyle and Jethro know each other, like father and son, or? Stepbrothers. Stepbrothers, great. <laughs> and um, where are they today? Not, not at home, they're at some, maybe like this, uh, a location that might fit on this stage, like a post office or something. They're at a coffee shop. Coffee shop was the first thing I heard. Uh, so, stepbrothers at a coffee shop, and begin. Don't sit at my table. It's my table. Just because your dad and my mom married <laughs> doesn't mean you can sit at my table. You don't own half of this table now. I want to be clear about that. Okay. I'm just glad that you said your dad, meaning my dad first, because he is the most important one of the two. He didn't get top billing. He's just your dad. I say my mom because my mom, this is best for last. My mom is awesome. 
my mom is unstable, and I don't know how long the dad's been. <laughs> I've had a lot of stepbrothers. <laughs> my mom has had a lot of husbands. So don't get comfy. You may not want to unpack. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I brought you here. I thought we could be a little bit closer. I didn't want to shout to Crazy Mocha about how crazy your mama hey, is. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey. It's not crazy Mocha, all right? Sometimes I, Mocha has a, 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 an instability in some of his clans. If it's not Mocha's fault, then Mocha is crazy, all right? Mo maybe Mocha can't afford the expensive medication. It needs to be well. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy Mocha, isn't it? <laughs> that goat is yeah. bananas. <laughs> Listen, I, hey, it's nothing against you personally, all right? I'm sure you're a nice person. I'm sure you're okay. That is an amazing mustache. <laughs> that is like, you could be on the cover of Mustache Aficionado magazine with that. Thank you. It only took me like four and a half months to get this. It only took me a half an hour to get this. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not crazy. Sometimes mustaches have Yeah, yeah, fair point, fair point, fair point, fair point, fair point. Um, wow, that's great. I mean, all of my body hair is real. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to grow out my fingernails to be in the Guinness Book of World. Oh. I have never learned to ride a bicycle. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be in my family, and then I need to be comfortable being vulnerable around you. Hey, that was really sweet. Thank you. Hey, you are terrible at being a kid. <laughs> Is that Stevia? <laughs> hey. Hi. <laughs> hey, let me stop you there. <laughs> right, I appreciate that you're trying to get close to me, and we, uh, maybe you want to teach me how to ride a bike or something. But I do, that's what I was getting at. Uh, I can't be your friend. I can't read. <laughs> I think that traditional interpretations about 19th century being... Uh, I think Galaga is overrated as a video game. There, I said it. You probably learned that from your crazy mother. I'm going to show you a never-before-seen uh, clips from an award-winning film, uh, an Oscar-worthy film. And uh, we're gonna get the suggestion for you of what the film is called, and what's gonna happen is, uh, at very, various points in, during the scene, um, I'm going to freeze, and we will see each of the actors' award-winning moment. So what they got nominated for at the awards that year, okay? So to get us started, I just need the title of an award-winning film that does not exist yet. What's the, What's that? Jag off. The award winning film. It's gonna happen. Jag off. Hey, my God. I can't believe it's 2 a.m. and you just got home, Jerry. I'm so sick of you and your ways. Denise? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna tell you one time, and I'm gonna tell you one time only. Me and my cousin Stevie, we were down around McKeesport, and we saw some free plywood, and we had to get it. <laughs> Denise, the back of my truck is full of free wood right now. This week it's firewood. Last week it was Busy Beaver's going out of business, and they're giving away lawn furniture. Denise, you want me to put that addition on the game room or not? What about the addition on my heart, Jerry? Take care of my dreams. And now we see Christie's award-winning moment. There's a basement in my heart, and it has not had any furniture in it for a long time. I say, Jerry, put a lazy boy down there. No. Why don't you put a wet sink so we can have a bar? No. <laughs> Unfinished heart that beats inside of me. <laughs> 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 
Casey, let me try to tell you something real quick. I try to put that, this lazy boy in your heart. You know that, right? I try to park that lazy boy in you all the time. You know what I'm saying. Freeze. Now, let me see Aaron's award winning moment. And I love you so much, Denise. Give me this. <laughs> but I'll do anything, anything to be back in your heart, Denise. I'll tell you what, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give up my stellar season tickets. Oh. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get season tickets to your heart every single day. Not just Sunday, but I'm going to have season tickets, reserved seats, club box seats, and your heart for the rest of my life. Hey, don't you tell my pap I was crying. <laughs> what you did? I'm sorry, pap pap, we wake you. Is our sleep being a lazy boy? You're always screaming and crying. Sorry, pap. We were just, you know, having marriage moments. <laughs> you know, I think you'd be dead on this ass. <laughs> Where am I supposed to take her to talk about marriage? Just uh, get that back. Well, you want to go fishing and talk about marriage? We can get some catfish down the yacht. Uh, I hate fishing at 2 a.m. It's so late. You should have a hurry once for me, but put food in your face. Freeze! <laughs> we now see Pap's award winning moment. Ever since you was a little boy, and I raised you out there, we used to play out there in that creek. <laughs> and I'll tell you, you can be anything you ever want to be. <laughs> anything you ever heart ever desire. But only if you respect me. And you respect his ass. And everything I do to build it. I put your mother in the ground three years ago. And ever since then, I see the face of love, it makes me sick. <laughs> and when I see that love between yous two, it breaks my heart, which I thought was made of steel. Still the hardest thing that ever came out of this. Go Steelers! <laughs> Stay in sin. You schooled us, Pap. <laughs> you know what, Denise? Pap is right. He's right. He's always right. <laughs> Pap, are you right all the time? You're right about everything. Everything in my life. Middle school, slow <laughs> tech, <laughs> everything. You're like the Chuck Nolas family, Pap. <laughs> you are the Chuck Nolas family. And I'm, I apologize for crying, but you said Chuck Noll twice in a sentence. You want to know what? You want to know why? Because I was raised by nuns. <laughs> it's called Alphabet, uh, and what we need to get started is a couple players up on stage. Give them a hand. So what's going to happen is every consecutive line of the scene is going to start with the next letter of the alphabet. Uh, so if one player starts with... Um, uh, always uh, good to see you. The next player might start with, by George it is, and so forth it's down the letters of the alphabet. Uh, only it's better than that. Uh, and so to get them started, can I just get a location that would fit on this stage? Albuquerque. Uh, like, like what specific part in Albuquerque? I just, I just jumped. I just thought A, I'm gas sorry. Gas station. Uh, what was it? Gas station. A gas station, Albuquerque. great, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> gas station that maybe is in Albuquerque. And a letter of the alphabet to start on. Yes. Uh, F, I heard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Funny, you don't look like you are from around here. I've lived in Albuquerque my whole life. <laughs> Gosh, can you tell? I'm so lost. Gosh. <laughs> Heck yeah, I can tell. That's why I said it the first thing when I saw you. You look like a stranger in your neon colors and your crazy sun hat. 
<laughs> I'm Jamie, I'm a blogger, and I'm touring the country on my Vespa. <laughs> Jamie, huh? That sounds like a city name. Here, Albuquerque is not really a city. We're kind of a, kind of like a city had a suburb for a baby and called it a city. Kinky. A suburb and like a city. Baby. Albuquerque kink. Let me ask you, stranger. What kind of sundries do you need here at Carl's Gas and Go? My Vespa broke, <laughs> so I need a new car. A new car? <laughs> We're a sundries shop, not a Mercedes-Benz dealership, oh, city lady. Where is the best Vespa shop in Albuquerque? <laughs> <laughs> People say you should go to a bigger town. <laughs> and that person who says it's me! Quiet! Quiet! Is that a wolf? <laughs> or a coyote? <laughs> really don't think there's any out during the day. They're the nocturnal type. <laughs> I swear to God that's a coyote. I've listened to so many videos on YouTube preparing for my trip. <laughs> trip to here? How much preparations do you need to a trip to here? Listen, city lady, we don't have cars. We've got jerkies, bananas, <laughs> and, you know, those little roses that come in a tube. <laughs> um, I don't think you understand how serious this are. Your most referred to part of the by a coyote, and my friend Jessica said it happened to her friend Mallory, and they were in the desert and they got eaten by coyotes. Vexing. Your whole attitude vexes me. I thought I had an entire day to just sit and be salty by myself in the sun. Why are you so hardened by life? <laughs> Exactly why you think so. <laughs> it's a hard life in Albuquerque. People don't want sundries. Since the highway came in, they just drive on by. It's like my life is Pixar's cars. <laughs> you know, I have a friend who worked on that film. <laughs> Zany people like you come in with your city ways, asking for things like cars, which is totally ridiculous. And then you just leave, and then I'm just here selling my popsicles. Actually, I asked for a Vespa, and I feel like this start to our best friendship is going weirdly. But you said a car. Can't remember things. I have a uh, memory loss. Don't say. So do I. A Vespa shop. Well, I wish you'd have started off with that. Why, well, sure. I've got a whole fleet of Vespas in here. I 